For limited stage, earlier small cell lung cancer, our standard of care is concurrent, meaning simultaneous radiation and chemotherapy. Surgery is very rarely a part of the proper treatment for small cell lung cancer. A combination of chemotherapy and radiation given together can lead to cure. We deliver radiation over the course of many weeks and we give chemotherapy, typically cisplatin plus etoposide. We give those at the same time. The chemotherapy is given over three consecutive days every three or four weeks for four rounds. The radiation typically lasts somewhere between four to six weeks. When we give concurrent, simultaneous chemotherapy and radiation, the chance of response of shrinking the tumor is extremely high. In early studies, the response rate was 97%. The complete response rate was 40%, meaning for 40% of people, after chemotherapy and radiation, we couldn't see cancer on the scans. That is not the same as a cure. Because unfortunately, for even those patients with a complete response, that cancer is likely to come back. Our median survival is only a little over two years, and our chance of really curing someone with early stage small cell lung cancer is probably somewhere around 20 to 30 percent. There are side effects of treatment, for example, difficulty swallowing, nausea, vomiting, fatigue. This does cause a hair loss as well. But overall, I think this is a well tolerated regimen. Typically, patients will feel better because their cancer will respond. But what we need is something more durable. We've been trying to improve survival for a long time. It's been very challenging. And so with aggressive concurrent chemo radiation, which is the appropriate therapy, the chance of response is very high. And there is a chance that we can cure those cancers. But the majority of patients will not achieve cure with the standard treatment. It's very important to look for a clinical trial. There are exciting new drugs out there that we think will be better than the standard treatment. But the current standard is chemotherapy with radiation. With that, unfortunately, most patients will relapse into extensive stage small cell lung cancer. And most patients in the U.S. start off with extensive stage. For extensive stage small cell lung cancer, our primary treatment is chemotherapy. Radiation can sometimes play a role. It can help palliate painful bony lesions um, when the spinal cord is involved, if there is a blockage of major blood vessels or of the lung airways, or if there's affecting the brain radiation can provide relief. This is a radiation-sensitive cancer. What's unique, though, about small cell lung cancer is that it is exquisitely sensitive to chemotherapy. And so in many of those cases, chemotherapy will be the fastest way to get a response. That's different from other types of cancer. And radiation uh, may not be necessary if we can start chemotherapy fairly quick. And again, with chemotherapy, the chance of response is high, but these responses are temporary. Well, we use a combination of platinum etoposide. You'll sometimes see it referred to as EP or PE. The P is platinum, either cisplatin or carboplatin. The E is etoposide. And this is our preferred current standard of care for chemotherapy in the U.S. The chance of response, meaning a significant reduction in the size of that tumor, is about 60%. But 10% of people will have a complete response. And that response usually will occur within the first four to five weeks but the time to progression is only about four months, meaning most patients' cancer will start to come back either during or shortly after finishing chemotherapy. And the average survival for many decades was limited to eight to nine months. The choice of platinum, cisplatin, or carboplatin doesn't matter too much in extensive stage or advanced small cell lung cancer. There's no difference in survival or in progression-free survival, meaning preventing relapse or progression of that cancer. They certainly have different side effects. Cisplatin has more nausea, more vomiting. Carboplatin is a little more toxic to the bone marrow, lowering of the platelets um, and the white blood cells. But both regimens, I think, are very well tolerated. And so this three-day regimen where you receive the platinum drug on the first day, etoposide on day one, two, and three, this is an outpatient regimen. We repeat that every three to four weeks. It's a tolerable regimen that, again, causes hair loss, lowers the blood counts. And so sometimes we have to give uh, a hormone to raise the blood counts. It can cause nausea and vomiting. And that's why you receive powerful medicines to prevent those side effects. It certainly can cause fatigue. Um, sometimes over time can cause ringing in the ears or numbness in the fingers and toes. A very small chance of a second cancer years down the line. But overall, patients, when they receive this treatment, will feel better. How many cycles do we give? Well, generally, 
We limit it to four cycles of treatment. Our official guidelines say two cycles after our best response. Since most people receive their best response after the second cycle, we usually go to four. I would not go beyond six at most. And typically I only give four. After four, it's generally diminished returns, more side effects. The data does not support giving chemotherapy indefinitely. That is not the right thing to do. After we finish chemotherapy, we watch. We know those cancers, are, those cancers have a very high chance of coming back. And we want to make sure that we watch closely so we know when that does happen. What's a little different from other cancers is if patients are very weak, a lot of times we will still recommend giving chemotherapy because this cancer is very responsive to chemotherapy. And so if a patient is weak because of the cancer, we can generally get a response and have patients feel better. Chemotherapy is the standard backbone treatment for small cell lung cancer. High chance of response, but that benefit is temporary. And what we need to do is improve those outcomes. But this chemotherapy has been around since the 1970s. And even though it's decades old, that has been our standard treatment for many decades. We simply haven't been able to get better. It is always important to look for something better, especially in a cancer like this, where the outcomes are simply not too good. What we need here are clinical trials. Over the past few years, we have seen clinical trials finally make some progress. And it really came in the realm of immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is very important for other types of cancers like melanoma, kidney cancer, and non-small cell lung cancer. We know that cancers that have a lot of mutation seem to respond better to immunotherapy. And small cell lung cancer does have a lot of mutations. And so we expected this to respond quite well to immunotherapy. 